All right, so let's get started. Um, this is going to be an introductory video that is going to go over two presentations um, that outline basically what the class is and uh, what the project is going to be. So let's get started. Um, for one, I'm Tony. You can just call me Tony. Uh, my full name is Anthony Bohm. I don't have a PhD, so yep, you could just call me Tony. Um, next slide, hopefully. Okay. Um, so if you've taken mill and lathe training before, you will not have to redo it for this class apart from the quiz. Okay, so uh, this, you know, as it stands right now, fall 2024 will be the first semester where uh, I have online quizzes that accompany your mill, lathe, and laser training, uh, as well as the saw room training. Um, so if you have mill and lathe training before, that is still valid, but in order for your grade to count you know, just so that the grades are all fair for everyone who has and hasn't taken it. I'm going to ask that you take the quiz. OK, but you don't have to sit for the hands on portion uh, of the training. OK, um, additionally to the mill and lathe training, um, you may or may not have gotten EHRS training. So uh, that's an online training that's from, uh, you know, uh, a, a university um organization called uh, EHRS, which is Environmental Health and Radiation Safety. Um, so yeah, you do general shop training there. Um, and then we have a, a couple other shop trainings that you're going to need to do uh, that you'll see on, on quizzes on Canvas. Um, so yeah, as far as the schedule go, the first two weeks, as I hopefully, hopefully you know by now, um, there will be no class. OK, on the third week is when we're going to start our mill lathe laser rotation. OK, so we're going to get ourselves into groups. Um, I'm going to show you guys um, how to do that with uh, with this video. And uh, once you get yourselves into groups, it'll become clear um, which one does mill lathe laser when. So uh, basically, you'll have groups one, two and three for each section. Um, one will start on the mill, two will start on the lathe, and three will start on the laser. And then uh, week two, uh, mill will, the people who were on the milling machine will go to lathe. People who were on the lathe will go to laser, and the people who are on the laser will go to mill. Okay, and then for the third and final week of, of that um, mill lathe laser rotation, you, you just do the machine that you, uh, you, or you train on the machine that you haven't been trained on yet. Um, yeah, and then after that, we're going to keep an open lab time week. Then I'm going to go over CNC lecture, um, and, and then I'm going to do two CNC, um, you know, hands-on exercises. All right, so um, there's very little in terms of, like, in-person lecturing. Uh, there will be a lot of videos and quizzes that will be associated with other subject matter, such as how you draw, make a drawing and, and other things like that. OK, um, yeah. And basically our our project uh, this semester is to make a marble maze assembly. I'll talk in a little bit more detail about that in a minute when I get to our other presentation. Um, but basically what this is supposed to do whoops, is involve all of the uh, machines that we use in the machine shop. OK, so um, we're going to have a CNC mill, a manual mill, a manual lathe, 3D printer, uh, laser cutter and and a CNC router. We're going to use six machines uh, to create uh, this assembly. Okay. Um, as far as what you're graded on, you're going to have homework. Okay. Homework. You're going to have uh, drawings and many parts. You're going to have quizzes, which um, come basically before your trainings. That's that's what those are. And there'll also be some quizzes to reinforce what you know about GD and T and measurements and other things like that. And then you have uh, your deliverables. Which is a, a which is done as a group, uh, as well as a final exam, um, or sorry, yeah, final exam and and the final assembly that is also due. Okay, so talking about you know the project a little bit, I don't want to get into too many details. I'll talk about the specifics and how and what the rules are in the next presentation. But you will have to make a version of this in. SolidWorks, okay, individually. All right, so every individual will have modeled this in SolidWorks. However, when it comes to actually making it, you're going to pick one per group, 
and you're going to um and and you're going to just pick one person's assembly and and build it okay so the physical manifestation of the assembly will be um will be a group assignment um as well as the final bolting together of the assembly so if you notice you get um deliverables grade so that is every individual one of these parts is going to be graded and then you also get an additional grade um for the full assembly okay and both of those are grouped so that is done so that um in case like you have parts that don't interface uh, and you have to remake those parts um you know you, you get a lot of credit for just everything going together because um you could have to remake some parts so that everything uh fits properly okay so again your deliverables are a group and your final assembly is also a, a group assignment as well okay but all the drawings, okay, all the detailed drawings for each one of these individual parts is going to be individual, okay, and that's going to be part of your homework grade, okay? You're also going to have mini parts. Let me show you. I think I can show you one of those now. Um, yeah, so this is an example, example of a laser mini part. You're going to have laser, uh, you're going to have mini parts for the mill, the laser, the lathe, and the CNC router, OK, and those are also individual. It just basically shows me that, um, you know, the skills on your own and you're not just relying on other group mates to, to do that stuff. OK, so now I will go over the lecture on how to specifically make the assembly. OK, so now we're going to talk about the project rules and, you know, uh, what we're going to do for um, for the drawings and everything. Um, all right. So, again, the goal for this project is, is to use pretty much all the, the tools that we have in the machine shop. Um, this is done so that you could be more prepared for senior design. Certainly, if you're doing the CAM follower senior design project, um, that is going to uh, really tie well into what we're doing here in machine shop lab. If you're doing the thermal fluids one, it'll be a little bit less relevant, although you'll still have to use the lathe and the mill on some things. Okay. Um, so yeah, the the part the the machines we're gonna be learning are three D a three D printer. I have an Ender three V three SE that you're gonna be uh, actually doing the parts on. Um, we're not gonna be using Ideas Hub printers for this particular course. All right. Um, we also have the milling machine. That's the manual mill. Uh, we have the lathe. We have a CNC mill, laser cutter, and CNC router. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll make an assembly with all of those machines. Now, this is the assembly. This is my version, which actually never got made. Um, this is an example uh, from a student, although it looks like they have a pretty similar uh, base plate design to mine. Um, so anyway, um, it's a marble maze. And basically, you have to make it with all these uh, different components. OK, and, um, you know, there, there's there's a bunch of requirements which I'll go over. But basically, uh, the functionality of it is supposed to be able to send a marble down it like that. Okay. Very simply, that's that's really all you're you're supposed to get it to do. Okay. Um, so yeah, and again, you're using all of those individual components. Uh the 3D printed part is is this one here. This one, sorry, let's make it so that you can see that. So this is the 3D printed part, the sort of serpentine one. This guy right here as a support pillar is a CNC mill. This guy is from the laser cutter, this guy is from the manual mill. Uh, this guy's from the lathe, and the base is from the CNC router. All right. So let's talk about these parts individually. So the mill part. All right, I'll, I'll duck this down again so that you could see what's actually happening here. But this is your mill part. Okay. Uh, it'll be made from half-inch material. Um, I give you guys generally the outer dimensions of three inch by three inch. I'm going to give you a roughly three inch by three inch piece. It'll probably be a little bit bigger than that so that you can mill on all the sides. But um, yeah, I'm giving you guys limitations so that I don't have to, you know, buy excessive material. Um, sort of gives you some boundaries. Uh, and this has got a bolt to the 3D printed part, as you can see this student does, um, and, uh, and, and the routed base. OK, um, and then it has to have a lip, as you can see here, it has like a little sort of L section cut out um, such that it interfaces nicely and, and fits flush with uh, your laser cut part or ideally should fit flush. So basically it needs to bolt to the 3D printed to the routed base and 
to the laser cut part um and it has to you know bolt flush with with that lip there so yeah you're gonna have to do some milling on on all the sides as as well as you know mill that little lip into there okay um next is the laser cut part so that's kind of convenient because it's right above the mill part here. Um, but basically it has to interface with the 3D printed part and the mill part, as I previously mentioned. And the sides have to have splines. So I, I tried to make it so that each one of these parts, is, you know, will be, you know, maybe maybe you could make this on a CNC mill, you probably could. Uh, and you could probably also make this on a CNC router, but um, long flowing edges like this, are really well suited to to laser cutting because you know let's say this radius here that I'm pointing to was very small somewhat like the the um the model that I have you know in the presentation um you know laser a laser cut point doesn't really rely on tool size to cut into all these intricate uh geometries and everything like that and hard edges like this um you know don't have uh, as much of a radius as if it were milled with a with a with an end mill, okay. Um, this is going to be cut from three eighth or quarter inch material. Um, it says three eighth in the presentation. You could do three eighth or quarter inch, uh, just because it kind of makes this lip a little bit um, a little bit thin if you make it out of uh, three eighth inch material. So quarter inch is okay too. And I'm going to keep it bound to a roughly three inch by three inch area. Um, again, going a little bit more than these will probably be okay. Um, but these are just general guidelines so that uh, you know we're not using excessive material. Okay. And again, this much inter must inter interact with the mill interface with the mill and the laser cut part. Okay. Now the lathe part. All right. Um, so yeah, this is going to be made from one inch diameter stock. Okay. Um, you need to make it in three diameters. Okay. So you can see this student did it, you know, fine, you know, perfect way he made a small diameter here, larger diameter and even larger diameter still. Okay. And then they have very simply two tapped holes. Whoops. Drop my marble. Two tapped holes, one from the bottom and, and one from the top as well. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's uh that's your lathe part. As you can see, my part here in blue, um, I've made it uh, so that it has that weird diameter that's in the middle that's smaller. Um, that will be a lot harder to make than this particular part style. You know, basically you have continuously reducing diameter, then you could use a turning and facing tool um, to, to make the whole thing. But for this blue one that I have in the presentation, I will, uh, you'll probably have to use a parting tool. So if you have a smaller diameter in the middle, okay, and larger diameters to either side, you will need to use slightly different techniques than the student used to, to make this particular part. Okay, next uh, is the 3D printed part. Okay, um, pretty simple. This has got to be, so you're going to likely make this with a uh, with a sweep. Um, so you're going to do, uh, you're going to basically make a sketch that goes, uh, you know, th that, that dictates where the track will go. And then you'll make another sketch that, uh, dictates the, the track profile. Okay. And then you're going to make, you're going to extend that profile along the path. Okay. And then, you know, you'll probably need to make platforms that interface with, uh, with all your other components so that it can be, it can be mounted. Okay, and this one um, obviously has to interface with all of the parts. So the routed base, the lathe, the manual mill, the CNC mill, and the laser cutter. Okay, uh, and finally we have the CNC mill. Um, so uh, yeah, where is that over here? So yeah, this one um, we're gonna make this with a tabbing technique, um, and I'll explain more what that means in the CNC lecture. Um, it's gonna be made from half inch material, much like the uh, the manual mill stock. Uh, I try and buy a lot of the same stock. Um, but yeah, that also has to fit within a three by three. Again, same sort of size limitation. Um, and it's got to have all the names engraved. Now, I'm not going to be super crazy about that. I think you could hopefully see in shot. They this group just put their initials, and that's totally fine. It ends up being a kind kind of long winded if you if you put your whole names in it, uh, especially with you know if you have like a really long name, it, it ends up taking the path a really long time. So you could also do initials if you want. That's totally fine. Uh, and as you can see, I in my example here, I put a little poop emoji and you could do uh, various shapes like that as well, uh, which can be interesting. OK, your rounded base here. OK, so this one uh, we're going to make from either half inch or three quarter inch. Doesn't really matter. Um, 
this one needs to be a little bit bigger, but don't exceed 10 inch by four inch. Okay. A um, couple of things that we're going to have, you need to have some sort of routed edge. Um, okay. So that's like a, 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 something that you could perform a 3D contour on. Okay. So this student did something pretty similar to the routed edge that I have in my example, which is again, totally fine. Uh, and as you can see, it's got like a little radius to it. Hopefully you could see that from the profile. Uh, and for, for that reason, it's really well suited for doing a 3D contour. And, and I'd like you guys to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. And it, it must have some sort of cut loft geometry in the middle. I don't know if you could see in the middle there. See, it has some geometry there. I want you guys to try and do, to experiment with like 3D pockets and things like that. Other machining operations that you, that you do in CNC. Okay, so yeah, that's the uh, the CNC router part. And that concludes this presentation. Um, so yeah, hopefully that explains everything that you need to know. Um, the rules are pretty loose. Um, so hopefully that doesn't get confusing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of freedom in what you can do uh, with this with this with this project.